and welcome along and welcome back to Charwell. It is uh, day five. We're up to late spring. Uh, and we're heading down to... Uh, we're heading down to field... What is it? Field 44 at the top here. Um, the reason for that is we're going to give the uh, we're going to get it ploughed. It's the last field we uh, we really need to get ploughed. To be honest, um, there isn't really much more. So uh, we're going to be field 83 and field 19 are the two fields we're going to put poplars in. Uh, they're currently grass fields, so uh, we'll work well for that. Um, whereas uh, field 44 and field uh, 42. Uh, currently, are are not. Um, I'm a. I'm of two minds exactly what to do with them, because according to our crop rotation, uh, these two fields should be uh, just left as oilseed radish this year. Um, but uh, I, I'm tempted to put a crop into them, so uh, we'll have a look at that. We might double up on something like the corn or something like that. But uh, we'll see where we go. It is raining. Um, we are going to seed anyway. But, uh, well, actually, no. I think it's raining. We shouldn't be seeding. We are going to plough. So we will plough ourselves uh, in this field. It's going to be a bit of a short day as a result. Uh, we might get our new seeder today, I think. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's plow this field ourselves because uh, we shouldn't really plant in the rain. So let's uh, unfold this, and we want to get our plow turned. And so we're we're getting near the end of spring. We're getting to a point where uh, actually we have almost everything planted and done that we want. Um, everything on this tractor is at 40%, uh, is quite low. I have just noticed we don't have a huge amount of fuel on this. So we'll see how we go with the fuel. If we drop much more, though, we will take this back to the yard and get it refueled. Uh, for now, though, we've got our tractor going. We've got our, um, we've got our plow running. Let's, uh, let's get the GPS set up. Which we have. Perfect. See if we can keep a fairly straight line for this first edge. And in doing so, we have got... There we go. That should do it. I think we're... Almost off the edge of the field here. Yeah, we've got a tiny kink up at the far end. Oh, wow. That is quite a way off track we were. So, that's fine. Let's get ourselves out of the hedge. Get us turned round. Uh, and now we can check out uh, what our width is. Yeah, we've got a 30 foot. So, we want an auto width with a 2 but offset is about right. And let's see where our lines are. Because I have a feeling that having turned around and everything, our lines are going to be a little bit all over the place. Yep. In fact, there we go. So, let's see if we can uh, switch our offset. Uh, invert that. Yep. Get into our line. Down with. Oop. Down with our plough. And away we go. And this should, hopefully, keep us nice and straight now for what we are. So I'm going to take the course play screen off because we're not going to use that. Uh, and hopefully our, um, our GPS course should keep inverting now. Um, but as you can see, we weren't quite that straight when we did our when we did our course originally. But this will even things up. We will get back onto a nice straight setup. And it is a wet, wet day for ploughing today. It really is. So lift, 
switch. And it hopefully should invert, which it's not done. It's ever so slightly annoying. So we need to get this to... Or maybe I don't have to invert the offset every time. Is there a setting here? Yeah, now that is that is all a good setup. Nothing I can get to get it automatically invert, unfortunately, which is very annoying. Although, do I want it to? I actually don't want it to, I don't think. Because that will now put us in the wrong position. No, we, we don't want it to invert, so invert offset. We're in the right place. Let's try this again. Yeah, no, we are in the right place, so that's good. Let's uh, crack on with this then. And, uh, and we'll turn our lines off. And maybe... Just maybe by the time we finish this job, uh, it will be uh, it will be nice and dry, or it will stop raining, uh, which would be very useful to us. Uh, so the thing we got, as I was saying, this field, field 44, which is isn't that big, um, and field 19, which is uh, not field 19, sorry, field 42, uh, down the far end. These two fields are at the moment are what we should according to our crop rotation have oil seed radish in and i'm i don't know really if that's the way i want to go with it this year and simply because uh we don't well it would give us the boost for next year um which would be uh, an interesting way to go so maybe that is the way to go with it maybe we should put osr in here um let us know in the comments what do you think should we uh, should we plant something else in here this year other than oilseed radish um and that way uh, either make sure that we've got as many useful fields as possible or should we hold off and uh, and put osr in here this year so that next year we can put barley in here uh, is what we should be doing the interesting thing is we've got barley in the next field over. So next year that's going to be uh, poplar uh, that's, that goes into this field here. That is going to be a massive poplar field uh, for year two. It really, really is. Uh, it's going to be uh, that's going to be quite a mammoth undertaking for that field. Um, but then I, I'm also thinking maybe I should take poplars out of the rotation. Our two grass fields are actually quite good for that. Um, we could, uh, I don't know if putting all seed radish in between them would help. Um, but it's it seems to be quite a big thing to do. So taking poplars out might be a good choice as well. I don't know, it's a bit of a, a conundrum as to whether I should have poplars in this rotation at all. Um, but we'll we'll see how we go. We'll see what decision I make. We'll see. We'll see. Actually, our two smaller fields of poplars that we're going to have this year. Um, we'll see what a, a difference that makes, and uh, and whether that's something that we uh, that we really want to to go ahead with. Maybe. Um, you know, it's uh, it's one of those things where I'm not entirely sure of where I'm going with it at the moment. Other than the fact that it we do want to do those on this farm that we do want to uh, to be doing that uh, that particular crop we are at the end of the field there we go yeah so we are going to have to do a headland on this but uh, this is working quite well this um, I do like this tractor this tractor is absolutely fantastic and we haven't had um, we haven't really done a video with this tractor recently, so and it was about time. And it's it wants to picture from this side at the moment. It wants to do. Uh, we've got no light on this side, and I'm having trouble getting it. I don't think we are on our course plate uh, on our uh, GPS course, are we? No, we're not. There we go. 
we were slightly running out of the course which is something we didn't want to do yeah that is what I want Right, so we are going to crack on with this field. I think we've got enough fuel to uh, to get the rest of the field done, which is good news. Uh, what I'd really, the other job that needs doing today is field um, field thirty one, where we're going to plant the corn. That is uh, is currently. Uh, that currently could do with the spread of lime with us having uh, ploughed it now. So uh, I want to get, I'd like to get some lime on there and get that done. Um, the alternative, of course, is to put uh, the corn in this field and in field. Well, I'm tempted because of how corn, is, how important corn is to the pigs. I'm really tempted to put, um, put corn in 42 and 44 as well. And uh, and then sort of get some uh, oilseed radish in after we've harvested that later in the year. Because I think that after corn we could put uh, oilseed radish in uh, on this field and jump uh, to the barley here after that. And that would then just make it a useful crop on here. Let's have a look. Not in here, but in here. So, yeah, we could do corn, oilseed, radish and barley in one go. Because the barley I'd want is spring barley. And uh, and we can kind of uh, grab that quickly enough to get that to work. Uh, but, as I said, it's uh, with the rain today, uh, I don't think we can get much else done. Uh, I think we could get, conceivably, we could get a bigger plough on this map. This tractor would handle a larger plough. And if we set this going like that. There we go. Um, if we have a look in here and under garage. This has 355 horsepower. What we can do with that plough-wise... We can get this large lemkin uh, for that. Uh, I think that's the only one, actually. Wait. Just going to correct this little error here. That seems to have crept in. There we go. Um, so, yeah, that lemkin there we could use. The reason why I hadn't used that before is uh, notoriously bad with course play, that plow. Um so, yeah, really, really want... Oh, we've slipped onto the wrong... Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, notoriously bad with course play that plough. We would be... Uh, we would have a lot of trouble trying to get that to work with that. But uh, we are at the end of the ploughing, really. This is the last field we need to plough. And it's interesting, actually, looking at this... The, uh, the way the plough lines are going, that edge there would be the better edge to start on on this field, I think. So the edge nearest the gate. Uh, so we'll have to remember that when we are doing our uh, seeding, that that is probably the better way to go. Something we'll put to the test when we do the headlands, I think. Because uh, that will be... Uh, we'll have to run along this edge here to do those. And we've got a little bit of headland over there to do. And yeah, really, it's a case of... There's a lot here to do. We've got plenty of time, though, is the thing. We are, As I said, we are in late spring. We have got almost all of our fields planted at this point. Uh, with what we want to plant. We're going to do the poplars last. But we'll do those into summer. Because we want them to we want them to grow in time for winter harvest. But uh, we, we don't need to get them in until after everything else. Because they'll have all of autumn to grow as well. 
Um, I know poplars are fairly slow growing, so hopefully that, that will work. Um, but, uh, yeah. It's, uh... And that's actually, that is a good point. And that's another reason why I'm considering them to, to not put them in the rotation. Because, yeah, they are, they don't grow overly fast. And um, we want to, we want to make sure that we're, we're good. And in fact, I think, if I'm right, we've got the poplars in just before the wheat, which also won't work. We want to get wheat, wheat in as winter wheat. We want it to give it a long, a long time to grow. Uh, having the poplars in there immediately before it, uh, that causes us a problem because they are a winter crop and, uh, and we want to have that wheat in in the autumn. So, uh, yeah. We do have an issue then that we've got wheat going, uh, barley going straight into wheat, um, which, will, uh, which will reduce our wheat yield, which we kind of want to avoid doing. So uh, I'm going to have a look at the rotation again. I'm going to see what, how we can sort that end bit of the rotation to try and, uh, to try and get it. So that uh, we don't either lose a year or lose, uh, lose yield. Which is, uh, which is a tough one. Which is a difficult one. Let's turn this. Get this down. So this is going to be one of those videos where I, uh, where we do one job, and I talk for most of it. I think um, it is, uh, as I said, it is a wet day. Uh, again, I'm and I'm, I'm mixing up a little bit by uh, going into the various screens from time to time. Look at that! It is just a wet, wet day. It would be unrealistic for me to try and plant anything or do any uh, lime or anything like that. Uh, today because it is just wet um, plowing not so bad uh, plowing in the wet uh, is, is not such a bad thing um, uh, because it's it's not <laughs> it just you know you're breaking up the ground you're not um, you're not getting uh, you're not getting an overly muddy ground it's not like it's been raining for days now that's interesting because the GPS is on. Did we not have the GPS last row? Again, very possible. Let's just back up and get that strip there. We've got a strip over there we need to do. We might have to do a couple of headlands down this end of the uh, field. But otherwise, that is good. And, uh, and yeah, this is, uh, I, I'm still in love with this tractor. I still think this tractor is absolutely brilliant. And I'm really pleased that this is coming to, uh, to console. So if you haven't heard, uh, Giants uh, announced, I think it was late last week, that um, the Agrotechnica mods, of which this is one of them, uh, are going to be released um, via the mod hub including on console the first two appeared on console um end of last week uh, i expect two more to appear today or at least one more to appear today um and uh oh actually no i think i think they're doing every friday till christmas maybe um but yeah either way uh, over the next few weeks uh, expect these uh these mods these agrotechnical mods to turn up on the mod hub uh, which is brilliant. It gives a, a nice official source to download them from as well. Because lots of unofficial ones that are dodgy and, and I don't recommend using. Um, so, uh, yeah, it gives a nice official source to get them for PC as well. Uh, which is always a good thing. There we go last bit in the corner and then we can get the headlands done on here and it's going to be an early day on the farm today uh really because uh yeah we don't have a lot we can do in the rain i know the game will let me do lots in the rain but 
Yeah, let's. I want to be realistic here. We we shouldn't be doing lots in the rain. We did. I think we did do planting in the rain fairly early on, if I remember. Um, we are not in a rush to plant at the moment. It's it's one of those things in farming where if you're if you're desperate to get stuff in uh, or desperate to get stuff done, quite often uh, you might try it. You might have to do things like planting in the rain. But in general, uh, you try and avoid doing those things. It's not the end of the world if you do. But uh, it tends to make life easy. You tend to get tractors stuck and things doing too much in the rain and the wet. Right, so we want to get that bit there. Yep. And that has got... Right, headland done. Not quite. Let's just. There we go. And then press up and get one last run done because. To finish that off. Great demand at Bales. We, uh, uh, we don't have any, unfortunately. Um, interestingly, we do have. We, we still have fuel. So, what the last thing we're going to do for today's uh, video is uh, is head back and fuel up this tractor. And as I said, I think we might see if we can get our cedar because we do have time to do that. So let's run this up this side of the field here. It is a very, very wet day. Completely missed spots. Uh, two spots. That's better. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's gone well. We are still heading for a bit of a, 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 a uh, not. I'm not overly happy money-wise with where we're going to have to go, but we have enough crops and things to to cover the fact that we're going to have to borrow nearly half a million uh, to to get our. Well, to get our harvesting tools, really. Um, I'm half tempted to uh, borrow... Um, well, we've discovered over time, of course, on various series, that it's better to borrow the money. It's cheaper to borrow the money than it is to lease equipment. Um, so, I'm not... I, while i considering leasing the, uh, the baler for the poplars um, in the wintertime, uh, there is the whole thing that uh, that is not a really cost-effective way for us to do it. It would be cheaper to uh, to get a loan for the baler and return it after we've done uh, our fields or a couple of fields. It's going to be uh, worth of poplars this year. So uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a conundrum that one. We need to make enough money from those poplars for this to be for them to be a viable crop for us to do over the winter, as well as something to keep us going. Right, so that is that field nicely done. Let's get this back to the farm before it runs out of fuel. Right, and turn it off. Get us into transport position. Yep, there we go. And we can head back to our farm. Yeah, it is a wet day today. Oh. Pull over this side of the road. We'll put us in a tree, but never mind. There we go. Close our gate. And head back to the farm. So that is that. That is all of our fields uh, ploughed. Um, we still need uh, field uh, 1983. Um, both of those aren't ploughed. We're going to put the poplars in there without ploughing those two fields. Uh, we they will be uh, they will both be ploughed next year uh, when we're looking to get rid of the poplars uh, field. Uh, but and we are going to need a plough next year because we're going to need one 
uh, that can uh, get rid of the corn. I think we're going to keep this one because the, the large uh, lemkin, the issue we'll have with that is with the smaller fields. Trying to get them in there and trying to get that ploughed uh, is, uh, is going to be hard for us to do. Let's get into our yard. And I think our JCB, yeah, our JCB is sitting in the middle of it. Uh, so where is, do we have a fuel bowser in here? I'm not sure that we do. Water. No, we don't. So we actually, I think, need a fuel bowser in this farm. Because we have no way currently of filling our tractors. Uh, which is, uh, yeah, so this is all part of the new uh, barn design that we're going to have to do. So where is the nearest fuel station? The nearest fuel station is actually quite a way away. So I'm going to have to uh, take this tractor off, I think, after this and go and find somewhere to refuel. Uh, because there's nowhere obvious for me to put a, uh, a fuel station in this yard at the moment. Uh, it may be the first thing we build of our new yard through here. We're possibly there. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to have to start planning out the new yard soon, I think. We put a nice big shed in here. Uh, but yeah, wet, wet day for this. Let's take our JCB. And we'll go and get the next piece of kit we need for next time. Through here. But thankfully, not far to our shop. And we can get this ordered. So in here, and we're looking for planters. And the planter we want for next time. Looks at several. I mean, you got that for 150 horsepower. Uh, Lemkin there. But we are going to go with the Vatstad here. Uh, so this is 140 horsepower. It holds 2,600. Uh, yeah, which is more than that. Uh, it's a six meter one, this. So it's not massive, but it will do on the back of the JCB quite nicely. This is a mod available via the Mod Hub. Uh, it is 61,000 for this, which is going to eat up quite a bit of our remaining cash. Yes, we want to purchase that. There we go. Um, and uh, we're taking 2,060 litres. We're going to want uh, some uh, some seeds for it as well. Uh, now, this tractor is in uh, pretty good condition and with a good amount. Now, I don't want to buy seeds with their, uh, with their seed bags, uh, with their bags before this, so... Uh, we're just going to hook this up, and uh, and yeah, next time we will uh, we'll come down here and uh, and we'll fill this piece of kit up so that we can get the corn into the ground. Uh, let's take that off. There we go. Um, but that is where I'm going to end today's video. Uh, we're going to skip half a day and uh, come back on day six of spring uh, later this week uh, and, uh, and, and get the corn in. For now, though, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give it a like, drop us a comment and give it a share. And for all the latest videos and live streams from Virtual Farmer, please subscribe to the channel and ring that bell. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.